Did uh, Jimmy Duvall make it? Did Jimmy finally get here? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. yeah.
<laughs> when you're getting, you, it was literally dialogue they made me cut. He's been holding me. I, I feel like you're not on it. My dick's in boiling hot oil. Or, you know, whatever he says about the blowjob was just the end case of that is just too much. And it's like, it, it's, it's dialogue. You know what I mean? He's just talking. He says, I feel like my joystick. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah it's like, you don't see anything. But I remember they made me cut. It, it was there all related to Shadow Lives. Those two lines and a, um, uh, there was a shot. I had to. Separate, uh, substitute a take when they're against the wall in the crazy psyched out room. You could see Ryan's ass, like when he was like fucking um, Heather against the wall. And they, I ch had to change the thing with a higher frame on. But um, those were literally the only, and I think this for some reason maybe is pre the car or something. But it's the, yeah, I was like, oh, I want that in there. That's good. <laughs> this is how we were raised on film, everybody. <laughs> I'm more interested to hear what other people who have not, I mean, I think the conversation to me that would be the most interesting to hear is just um, what young people watching this film now would feel and would sort of relate to or wouldn't relate to or would feel was oh that's really big yeah, yeah, I, I love the really thing with the pay phone it's like it's like yeah. it's like what's well, my phone I'm like no I'll leave a message on the machine leave me a message and I'll beep in do you want to remember that yeah it's like this whole day just before so um, and just the visual like, like the visual just watching the clothes and hearing the music it was they all kind of always looked right except Jimmy's jeans were a little like yeah Jimmy's jeans were too high <laughs> 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 they're a bit long but a lot of the outfits I was like oh I could see that yeah and the music was so amazing to hear that soundtrack again was really fun. Oh, yeah. I, I, still, I, I think most of it stands, at least the music for me definitely stands the test of age. It's yeah. just timeless. Yeah. Um, <laughs> after that scene, I didn't speak to Sarah for uh, about six months. Um, but she was fine with it. She was, um, <laughs> she was cool. And uh, we're still best friends after, you know, all this time. I think I'd met you that day that I raped you. I think it was that day. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I'd never raped anybody. So <laughs> 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 life changing experience. <laughs> Yeah, 
proud of my students. And so it became Tosa for Fifth Generation in Nowhere. And I wrote Doom and Nowhere with Jimmy after we did Tosa Fifth together. And, uh, yeah, and so. <laughs> <laughs> and still this day, Jimmy's uh, signing the CDs. And I'm CDs. still here. I didn't die. Gamble? Oh, wow. No, um, you know, Nowhere always felt special. Like while we were making it, and the minute I got, I got a Twitter message from Kathleen telling me about the screening, and I was like, yes, I did automatically. I wanted to be there. It still feels special now. Like we all became friends right away, right? And I didn't want to be any, anywhere else, but on set of shooting the movie, it was just such a good time. Yeah, I mean, I really want to. I remember. I, I mean, I have such great memories of Nowhere, and I really remember it as probably one of the funnest movies that I've ever made. And we shot it during the summer, so it was literally like summer camp. Uh, like I remember the, we had those cheap trailers, like the Bangers, whatever, and everybody like, there were four of us in, yeah. or five of us in, and we'd all get them up, and it would just be like one giant party den, just like, <laughs> walking, and, like, it was, it, like, every day was like a party on the set, and it was amazing that we actually got anything filmed, because it was like, there was so much, I mean, it was just, I mean, everybody was really there to work, and it was really, like, we took it all very seriously, but it was just a really, like, awesome experience, I just remember it. I mean, a lot of the other movies I made, I mean, I remember Fifth Generation, we shot it was like winter, fucking freezing cold. To the second day of filming was the earthquake, yeah, and so we had aftershocks, and it was, there was this sort of endless feeling of doom through the entire Yeah, there was definitely a feeling, yeah, and whereas this movie, it just has this kind of, it, the energy of it was very much like the energy of the movie, just like kind of free-floating, and like very, like, kind of, everyone was sexy, and gorgeous, and fun. Yeah, it was just like this crazy, crazy summer, and... Um, that's why this movie just still kind of near and dear This is undisputably one of the great casts I think I've ever seen. Oh, like, every role is, I mean, nothing is undercast. You have someone amazing in every role. How does that happen? Where, where You had four casting director, uh, directors? How many? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We went through a few of them. I mean, it was, I had this thing at the time, Doom Generation sort of the same way, and it's, um, I really wanted even like the smaller parts like the Charlotte Ray from Fast Life as a fortune teller. And um, everybody's like something like the Brady Bunch is being learned and stuff. It's just I didn't want it to do it in a cheesy sort of cameo way, but for me the whole movie was like this surreal kind of dream like experience. And I wanted to have that surreal quality and that's why the production design and the fifth and the props, everything's so crazy. But I wanted the cast to be that idea of, you know, sometimes when you Dream, you have weird dreams, and like celebrities are in. <laughs> you just hear something you from a commercial, and yeah, it's like people sort of are in your in your consciousness, and so I wanted it to be that, where you're just constantly like bombarded with all of this stuff, and it just feels like this weird fever dream, and that was a, a really important part of this film and this generation. And how do you keep that up? Because I mean, I, I know it's been a little while now, but God rest his soul, it was amazing to see John Ritter up there. Actually, he was. And the day he filmed another so another USC Olympics. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the day he filmed was so awesome. I remember when he filmed his scene. You came up to me asking how many summers I've been with everybody. <laughs> oh, geez, how many summers have you been here? <laughs> uh, hold on. Oh, some years. Okay. Yeah, uh, 21? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what you meant. Did, did, did uh, you Plum and Charlotte Ray and John Ritter know what movie they were making? Sometimes <laughs> yes, and sometimes no. I think they just kind of showed up sometimes, like, I don't know what's happening here. Like, it's, yeah, no, a lot of them might work for fun. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think Eve Plum was a little bit uh, <laughs> confused. <laughs> uh, I mean, we, gave, we gave her a line to, in, I think it's Icelandic, and literally she had to learn them phonetically. And it was just, I mean, it was just, yeah, but I think so they understood, I guess, that it was just this crazy movie, and I was this crazy director, and, you know, so it was just, I mean, they understood it was this crazy empty movie, but I don't think they, I, I don't think they ever saw the movie. Um, it. Tell us a little bit about, like, where where you started with the cast and how it kind of snowballed to, to being basically, like, this all-star 90s cast. It was, I mean, it was amazing. I mean, it started with Jimmy, really. I mean, as I said, I wrote the part, the two parts in Doom Generation and I worked with Jimmy, and that's this trilogy of films, and from there, it was really, we just, it was awesome. I mean, we just had this casting session and um, just met everybody, and it's really funny that, um, I saw that casting for Hunter Longer, and literally we saw everybody in town, like like Matt Damon, like Sarah Michelle Keller, like all these people, like huge stars, were like they all came in because it's like in the, that's how it is now. I 
I mean, everybody, it, like coming to Sitka Moon is like that. It's just like every year there's this crop of people, and you don't know who the people are going to be. You know what I mean? And, and it's really exciting and really fun. And, um, you know, we just have this wide cast and search, and, you know, there's so many parts of the cast, and so many combinations of different things, and people can even rest at different parts. And they, well, I, I would love to thank Jordan Ladd for um, telling me about this film, this audition, <laughs> for, for introducing me to Greg. Because I feel like she's the reason I a big part of why. I mean, I have to go in an audition like three times. I read <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I read for Rachel's role, and I was already friends with Greg uh -huh. and Jimmy. Um, and it was like the first. I was pretty new to acting. Like I'd only been doing it about like a year and a half or so. And the first time I ever had to read for friends, which is a horrible experience. <laughs> and like it was sort of like, well, I can't kick everyone out of the room because I'm friends with everyone. And I choked. I was terrible. And I called Rachel and I'm like, I'm I was terrible. And Greg said, you were, what happened? You were terrible. <laughs> what? Not what? Not what? Not what? Not what? I don't even know what that was, but you, you should come read for this other role uh, in the movie. And I've spanked a lot of dudes. <laughs> Um, that was actually, I'll never forget that. All the guys are coming in, like, harder, tighter, <laughs> all day long. And I was like, wow, why am I here? Why, I, I need to be here too. <laughs> that was kind of cool, actually. <laughs> you, you also, you guys had a, an amazing production designer. Oh. Whoever's yeah. putting together the, those sets in the bedrooms, yeah. especially. How, did you, did you guys as actors have any say in, in how your bedroom was represented? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> He's not walking for a while. Yeah, really like that. Yeah, no, the rooms were amazing. Patty Podesta did the production design, and it was interesting because um, she had to step in at last moment and, uh, because Therese, who did Doom Generation, was going to do this movie, and then we had this whole like part. Now, I was speaking earlier to some students about how indie filmmaking is always such a struggle, and it's always a nightmare. It's always a struggle, and that's why in film school it's great that it's so hard because it's. It, it only gets harder from here on out. And I remember specifically on Nowhere, we had our budget cut in half overnight one time, and in we were in prep, Florida prep. And so we were supposed to do it for two million, and so we one million, and Torres was like, I can't, I can't do this movie because I don't know money, and I just can't, can't do it. And so like Lizzie had to pr replace her, in the, we were two weeks into prep. And, but a lot of the design and stuff, um, I mean, Patty came from this sort of art background, and um, a lot of the design, you know, we worked on it together, and, just sort of came up with these, uh, like I have a sort of visual idea in my head when I read the movie of, you know, I sort of described how like Jimmy's doing Christmas at once and he has these big murals and stuff on walls. And those, the, did she offer that to me at the end of the movie? Yeah. I was like, well, you should have this in the I'm gonna put that as big as in my room. And I think the gun that I had was a famous painting at a time, like a Longo or something. And so there, it was, she had a lot of art references that she used to do a lot of stuff, but every set had to be its own specific theme and its own specific idea. So it was it was okay. intense, especially for the for the kind of budget we had. Well with the film that's clearly it's sort of like very visual and, and kind of visionary, what does something like that look like in the script stage? Is this the same film that you wrote? Pretty much. Pretty much. I mean the script was pretty it's uh, pretty accurate. Yeah. You know, people yeah. got it. I mean I, I remember Heather when she just came in she was like, yeah the script was so like kind of visceral. No, and she really felt it. I mean, it, it doesn't say Jimmy Fallon's mural on the wall with a mm -hmm. gun to his head, but it, the, the dialogue is so stylized and, and, and all the acting. The mommy and the daddy, that's yeah. actually yeah. written in, he's cutting back and forth in the script. And we stuck, with, we were verbatim. Like most films were like, look at that one. No, this one, you know, the script was that. Yeah, it was very much, you didn't say um in the right place in that line. Like it, it's all very kind of specific, even though it feels kind of all over the place. Because it was made on a very tight schedule on a very tight budget, so, and I always have a very clear idea when I write my scripts of um, what the shots are and how, that's why I edit too, because where the shots cut and how it all sort of gets together. Good morning, Kill. <laughs> Great name the production company, Kill. So every time that they were calling up the production coordinators in the front <laughs> office, people would, they would hang up sometimes because they'd get a phone, good morning, Kill. <laughs> No, wait, 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 who was that? We needed, I know we needed something today. <laughs> We're not kidding. <laughs>